Oh, well. Well, hi there, boys and girls. It's your old pal, the Dead Ranger, here. Here we are back in the Old West. Actually, I was shooting for the intensely Old West, but, well, my unit here kind of malfunctioned, I guess. Still lots of interesting things to show you, though. Wait a second here. I'm going to show you this. You know what this is? This is the baby bitty pinky toenail of the largest creature ever to walk the face of the earth, the Preposterosaurus, over 500 feet in circumference, 18 big legs like an elephant, set around a horrible circular body, and it had a trunk that it beat on. <laughs> Uh, excuse me. Uh, sorry about the uh, <clears throat> roof. I have to do this intro. Join us now for a whole new kind of video adventure. The story of Frank, the young doctor with a terrible past. Lola, the torch singer who knew how to spell it. And Raul, the hideously scarred Wolverine trainer who chased them across seven continents. In the television part, Home Companion. See Yvonne, the Scangini brothers blow their nose. And Sophia, see turgid, meaningless scenes. See the Rat Boy. One, two. of discovery from Europe to the New World have been well documented. But could an ancient seafaring civilization have reached and colonized America from the West? World-renowned anthropologist and explorer Torber Flutten is one of the growing number of scientists who say, Yes. Here on America's western shores we find our suspicions overwhelmingly confirmed. Clothing, if it is worn at all, is kept to the barest minimum. Food is prepared on outdoor ovens. And everywhere, the palm trees. Lastly and most convincing, the unmistakable similarity of restaurants. Could the ancient Hawaiians have sailed to such a huge wooden restaurants to America's western shores? There was only one way to know for sure. The Voyage of the Kona Tiki, the remarkable account of one man's heroic attempt to cross the Pacific in a Polynesian restaurant. Using native workers and following exactly the designs and materials of the ancient Hawaiians, we begin our work. We must finish our craft in a record of time before the rainy season. The work drags on. We christen her the Kona Tiki. Tomorrow, we begin our journey. How about the El Dorado song? We know someday mankind will travel to the stars. But it will not be done in tiny compact cars. The interstellar trip would take a hundred years And we don't want to cramp your pretty legs up, dears So I will pick you up la, 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 la. About a quarter till la, 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 la. And we will pick up speed as we hit the hill And then I drop the caddy into overdrive and we will take right off into the starry sky We got a million dollars worth of ethyl gas 
and a reservation for the room. Tonight we're gonna drive the El Dorado to the moon. We're gonna drive, drive the El Dorado to the moon. I know the Soviets. La, 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 la. They must be most upset. Yet, 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 yet. Cause they cannot build a car like my LD yet. It's got the fireplace. It's got the swimming pool. If we need extra space, it's got the back seat too. We got a million dollars worth of Bethel gas and a reservation for the room. Tonight we're gonna drive the El Dorado to the moon. We're gonna drive, drive the El Dorado to the moon. Tonight we're gonna drive the El Dorado to the moon. We're gonna drive, drive the El Dorado to the moon. Day one. Spirits and expectations run high among the crew. If our voyage is to have any scientific validity, we must live in the exact conditions the Hawaiian sailors did. Well, Doreen has brought the fried the pork a poo -poo. For the first time, the neighbor's dog didn't bark when I drove up. Rogar, eat! Rogar! You stupid behemoth! Now the neighbors will be coming over here! Already come! Well, they must have been furious. 
Rogar, eat. You idiot! Now the police will be here, Rogar! Already come. You didn't. Please do not punish. What did you do with the police car? Bruce. Oh, Rogar, you're going to be sick. Go outside. Still, we have not left the land even though a good westerly wind prevails. We change the tables so as to shift our weight toward the seaward side of the restaurant. Doreen has brought the sweet and sour pork. I'm having the best time making these little movies. For me to be able to sit down here and just play the piano like this is wonderful, because I can't play a note. <laughs> Mike Melvoin recorded this earlier, and I'm just pretending to play back. The piano doesn't even work. It's more like a drum. Song is Night and Day by Cole Porter. Cole Porter was born in Peru, Indiana. But during the 1920s and 30s, he became the toast of the European continent. Because of his sparkling wit and his brilliant personality. Well, in the 1930s, he went back to Peru, Indiana to visit the roots that he loved so dearly. And what follows is a fascinating and little-known chapter in the history of Tin Pan Alley. I've had my nights of Manhattan around. Jumped into satin and round up the gang. Sucked and sipped and quipped at sardines. Muddled through the endless slew of thrilling, swilling parties. Evenings of magic. Evening so droll, but sitting here with you, I'm baby cold. Monday was dipping mangoes in champagne. The day before was tangled on the banks of the Seine. Jetting with the jet set, heavy petting with the stars. Dating, mating, punctuating life with caviar. But although it becomes a bit of babbling balderall, so squeeze out all the stuffing of this dapper ragamuffin, cause it's me, ma. Yes, it's me, ma. But me, ma. Baby, come. I guess it's good, son. I don't think I get it, but you always had the gift. Mangoes. We could plant mangoes, yeah, sure. <laughs> Mother, I've written the most marvelous song about an oyster. That's nice, dear. But things have changed since you've been gone, son. That bowl came hit us bad. Wiped us out. No crops, no caviar, no nothing. <laughs> Pa went clear off his head. I say! There's a wish each tot has had. The dad be tot and tot be dead. But it can spook you pretty bad. Sing mumbly, mumbly, mumbly. Mumbly, mumbly, mumbly. Mumbly, mumbly, mumbly. Hey! Paul just ran Jeb Lawrence off his land. He's pinched us every time. We're having a meeting over at Jeb Barn. It is time we fought back. Come along, son. We need all the help we can get. Yeah! He can pinch us, but he can't push us. Yeah! Let's push him back until he stops pinching us. Yeah! yeah! Time we stood up to him. Yeah! yeah! But we don't have nothing to eat. Well, yeah. time we done something about it. Let's form a union. Yeah! A union of poor, starving people. Yeah! And we won't eat till they give us food. Uh, Chester, let's go back and talk about economics for a while. But he's right, though. We gotta organize. We need a rally cry. A song. We need a union song. Yeah! What about the Porter Boy? Let's hear from the Porter Boy. Just open up your heart and sing, son. What's so dusty about the dust bowl? Why so picky about the poor? Everybody moans about the market crash. Well, I say the crash is a passion bore. Why so depressed about depression? We can all play hooky every day. Accuse, destroy, confuse, annoy. I shout ahoy to the hoi polloi. What's 
for the circuit judge to tell us what to do. I say, hang the pop! Well, Cole Porter escaped the angry mob that night. It wasn't long after that that he was invited to India by Mohandas Gandhi himself to participate in the celebration of the sacred cow. And it was there that he came up with this immortal classic. You're the top. You're a T-bone platter. You're a chop. Couldn't get much fatter. You're a mound of round that's been ground into a pulp. You're a roast beef sandwich, a leg of lamb, which I gladly go. <clears throat> and Gandhi loved it. You're the top. Day three. Torvalds and our navigator grows frustrated by our landbound condition. Ingo, our radio operator, confesses his dislike of pork. You will have to adjust to it in the long days ahead. Doreen has brought the flaming pig. Buckaroos and buckarets, how do you get back here in the old west with your pal, the dead ranger? Well, no matter, I'll tell you one of my incredible stories. I guess it all started back at Alamogordo. How old, how everything I am today to the atomic bomb, don't you know? You see, when they built that first one, I thought it was a radio tower going up on my land. So I wrote them a note every night to stop. But uh, they wouldn't stop, and finally they put this big refrigerator I thought, big dummy, on top of the radio tower. Well, I decided I'd get, get it off. I got my vice grips and I climbed up there and I could hear them counting down 10, 9, 8, but I think they're telling me that's not my refrigerator. And by law, it will. Who cares? The main thing is that the door on the refrigerator come open and I remember there was a light and I got a, got a slight sunburn. And I woke up in Caracas, Venezuela, 1659. That's when I first run into Pizarro. Well, I don't know how much you know about them Incas and such, but everything they know about cutting stone, they learn from yours truly. That Pizarro, well, he was deep into his cups from day one. The man only wanted wine, he didn't want gold. Came inland with 15 cocktail waitresses and conquered the Inca Empire. Five Second Theater presents a special six part miniseries 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. And now, part two of 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. Tonight, Part 3 of 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. See anything? Not yet. And now, the fourth incredible episode of 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. The shape is Tokyo. Kind of oval, isn't it? I'm not sure. Part 5 of 30 Seconds Over Tokyo will not be seen in order that we may bring you this special message. Time travel smells like Broccoli. And now, the conclusion of 30 Seconds Over Tokyo with no further commercial interruptions.
you guys are just great, fantastic. I'm going to get you a record deal right away. All right! All right! Just one thing, fellas. You got to get rid of the guy with the recorder. No, no way, man. He's been with us since the beginning. He's a founding member. Then there's no contract. Uh, nice working with you, man. See you, man. We'll see you later. our first mate, tried to throw himself overboard into the parking lot. We have tied him up in the piano bar for his own safety. Doreen has brought the traditional gaily colored tropical drink made from ham.
something? I think we're gonna like living here at the beach, Rogar. Really, the people here in Malibu are so open-minded about pets. Really, your feet. Rogar, you're dripping wet. What's that you have slung over your shoulder? Rogar catch. No, Rogar, that's a Pacific blue whale. That's an endangered species. Rogar, bring home bacon. Bad, bad Rogar. Do not punish. I don't know why you do these things. There's plenty of kibble in your bowl. They find. Doreen has brought more pork. Five second concerts with John Hobbs at the grand piano playing the beer barrel Prokofiev. Day six. We cannot face more pork.
Fred and Ginger, John and Paul, George and Ringo, and all. I remember you. I remember you. I remember. I remember. I remember you. They said more pork. You came to see your old pal, the Dead Ranger, because you want one of my exclusive dashboard figurines. I can give you any size. I could give you religious, political, biblical figures. I could give you the president. So small, it can be used as a rifle sight. Ranging in size up to the eight and a half foot one on the roof of my personal tow truck. You know, a lot of folks have breakdowns out here on the desert. I have to go out and get them in my tow truck with the lights off. But I wired two 300-watt purple bulbs right into the president's eyes. So far this year, I've had 14 conversions, two suicides, and one natural childbirth. Ain't that lovely? One, two, one, two, three! I'm home, I had a wonderful day. Someone buried a Porsche on the front lawn. Do you know anything about that? I'm sure I don't want to hear it. That's all right. Good night. Please do not punish. <laughs> Good night. Children 
total control of my room. I want total control of emotions and total control of the wind, total control of beginnings, total control of the end. Yeah, total. And now, as the sun slides like a baked tomato across the grilled cheese of the western sky, Five Second Theater concludes its broadcasting day. <laughs>